Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, let's talk about the recent changes to the Google Play developer policy. Okay, so today's video is going to be a very quick one. I want to talk a little bit about the changes to the Google Play developer policy. Yesterday, I got loads of messages and emails from people asking if I got the same email from Google Play about the changes in the policy, and I have. And let's just talk a little bit about this. So have a look at my screen here. If you're a Google Play Android developer, you probably got the very same email that I have where they talk about just a few things, changes to the terms and conditions of, of Google Play. And, some, and it all seemed to make really good sense to me. You know, they clarify their child endangerment policies, dangerous products, violence, cryptocurrency, all that kind of stuff. I'm not, I don't have any cryptocurrency apps, so I skipped that over, but I'm sure it applies to a lot of you guys. Uh, so I'm not, I haven't really looked into it. What I was most interested in was the repetitive content on our platform. Now, I've talked a little bit in the past about reskinning so, some of my apps to reach new audiences, so this might affect me on some of those applications. Like just a few weeks ago, I talked about my second biggest app is called Ear Assist, which was an exact copy of Ear Spy or Ear Agent, right? Which I might end up removing or it may get. I, I might remove it before it gets removed by them. You know, it's one of these things. The, the language on this stuff is, is really different. Uh, so let's just have a look at this repetitive content. You know, copying content from apps without adding original content or value, creating multiple apps with highly similar content and user experience. Now, la late last year and early this year, I started getting uh, lots of problems with Apple about the Apple 4.3 guidelines. So it was really difficult because they started rejecting my apps for spam reasons saying you're releasing too many similar apps to the app store and my whole thing was these apps are all different they have different audiences they have different content so i have a language learning game where we took it and um so it, we started off to learn mandarin so you you choose the words you you do the translation kind of like flashcards things so we thought hey why don't we release this to other languages too let's do a spanish version and a korean version and the the user experience is the same. The, the graphics are different. The music is different. The tech content is definitely different. Everything is different about it. It's marketed different, differently and everything like that. But Apple started saying, no, they're too similar. It should all be one app. And my problem with that was that they still only give me one title, 100 keyword limit, or 100 uh, characters in the keyword, and it was impossible. So I could not compete as these apps could not compete with somebody else who only had one language, right? So that was the whole thing I said to them. The content is so different in these. The, the, you, know, you shouldn't expect somebody to download a giant app when they're only interested in one language. That was the whole thing. And if you had asked me before that if I was in violation of 4.3, I would have said no. I think 4.3 is a great rule, except they were just really the way it was enforced is terrible. And you talk to anybody with a significant number of apps and they're all suffering from this 4.3 thing, even though the app is completely, you know, they're, they're making all the changes and everything here. So when I read this, I mean, everyone was asking, you know, am I concerned about this? I am not because I do think that Google Play is going to be more, I think they're going to be better at enforcing this kind of things than Apple is. Apple has all these reviewers have to go through and manually review every single app, you know, each and every day. And I think this is going to be something that comes up. And if somebody complains about it, then it is. So everything where I'm talking about having, where I have a direct reskin like Ear Assist and Ear Spy, that's going to be a problem. But the language learning games, not so much. At least, you know, I hope not. And maybe I might need, I'm also curious about the free and the paid version. So I always release a pro version so they can buy it outright, and the free version with in-app purchases. I wonder if that's going to be a problem in the, f in the future or anything, but if it is, I'm hoping we get warnings and not just suspensions. So I'm, I'm not too concerned about that yet. I mean, let's look at some of these other ones here. Um, the, uh, they also don't allow apps whose primary purpose is to serve ads. I had to look at this one too, you know, where it's just like if you have too many interstitials after every single user and interaction, then it could get suspended. And I've talked about this before. I've had people at AdMob tell me that I'm not serving enough ads, so I go through and start putting more ads in. And you know, if they're changing the policy on that, I might need to you know, move back on that. So all of this stuff makes sense. From a user point of view, it all makes perfect sense. I'm not too concerned about it yet. Uh, and then there's also the thing about misrepresentation. 
anybody who's been on the Google Play Store knows how much junk there is out there. I mean, when I show you guys my copycats, when I, when I do a search on mine, I show you all the very low quality copies of my applications and it's just shamelessly, they're going through copying everything that I do and putting it in there just to serve ads. And it's and there's a lot of junk that goes in. And one of the reasons why we have to do reskinning is to reach new markets. And that's because there's thousands of apps going in every, every day and it's really hard to be found. So a reskin is another opportunity for somebody to find your application or to come into your sphere of influence, your world, but if they start enforcing these kind of rules, then there'll be less apps going into the Play Store and into the App Store. So then it will be easier to be found. The discoverability will go up. So you won't need to do the reskin. So I'm hoping, I'm actually very optimistic about this going forward. You know, it might be famous last words, you know, but um, I'm not, I don't think they're going to be as bad as, as Apple is on 4.3. I think they're going to do a much better job on this. But that's just, just my view so far. So let me know what you guys think. Are you looking forward to it? I mean, were you devastated to see that? Because at first I thought, ooh, this could be a problem. And it can on some of my applications, but I don't mind getting rid of them if the App Store gets, or the Play Store gets smaller. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, you know, if the competition, if we have less competition, we don't need to put out so many products. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Uh, anyway, and don't forget tomorrow night is the live stream, 5, 5 p.m. here in the 5 p.m. UK time. If you have any questions or want to have a chat with the rest of the group, uh, show up. And that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.